Sister Silverine, once again, it is a pleasure being here with you, having these conversations about a lot of different topics, but specifically geared at helping those going through parental alienation. As you know, the Parental Alienation Awareness International Network seeks to raise awareness of the issue of parental alienation, how it affects all aspects of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we have seen it in this program, all the discussions, how they are linked to parent, parents parenting and the style of parenting. Mm -hmm. Because in the last couple of episodes, we spoke about the influence or lack of influence of a parent can lead to criminal activity of raising of a criminal mind. On today's topic, I wanted to look at the issue of raising children properly so that they don't fall into the behaviors that lead people to parental alienation. Mm -hmm. So the abusive behaviors and the, the controlling behaviors and the deceptiveness and the all that takes place when a parental alienation situation arises. So today I wanted to find out your opinion about the, the parental styles of parents, mm -hmm. but specifically why people feel that bad parenting is good parenting, or why people feel that all the bad behaviors that they are doing mm -hmm. and they are the, the children are downloading by mere observation and interaction. Why parents feel that that is good? Nice. So, very uh, interesting question. So why do parents think that the wrong thing is the right thing? It comes from a long way. Because let's say a child is small and the child starts speaking, let's say rough, or harsh or in, under anger or doing things which is not right. So we think, okay, he is still small, he will learn when he grow up. Hmm? But the parent never tell the child, well, okay, to speak like this is not right. To be angry is not right. To speak rough to people is not right. To speak harsh to people is not right. They are not being told that. The parents just live with the illusion that when they grow up, they will change. But if you are being brought up, you are being brought up thinking to get angry is okay, to get upset is okay, to talk to people rough is okay, to speak loud is okay. Then when you get older, you think, well, this is okay. It is right because my parents never tell me this is not right. So everyone grew up speaking loud and shouting and we think it is okay because we were never taught that this is not right. So now everyone think it is right. Who will tell who? Who could tell a child now that to get angry is not right? When they themselves are getting angry. So even to get angry is not right. But what do people say? I have to get angry to talk to my children so they will listen. The human mind was not made to be um, cautioned or taught under anger. Do you know that? If you speak or if you are teaching under anger, will those children really learn? No. There'll be fear in their minds. No one could learn under anger, for example. But the parents think, well, I am the parent, so I must get angry and teach this, to teach these children. So there is an ego that is governing, that is ruling, that is controlling. And then this continues from generation to generation. And so it becomes a culture. The culture in this house, everyone speaks loud, for example. Mm, the culture in this house that everyone could speak under anger, speak harsh to each other, and that is fine. 
that is not fine. Why? That is not right. What is right and what is wrong? Whatever you do, or say, or say or do, uh, that causes hurt and pain to someone definitely is not right whether you believe it or not. Whatever causes pain and sorrow and hurt to someone is not right. Hmm? When you speak, think and act hmm, under peace, under influence of peace, love, hmm, calm, serenity, all these beautiful qualities, so you perform acts that will bring about happiness in others, then these will be Correct. So the question is, your question is, why do parents think that the wrong thing is the right thing? Because that is what they had grow, grow up thinking and believing. Which means they would have learned that from their parents. So it's actually a generational thing. So because they have learned it from their parents and their parents would have learned it from their parents. This is how they think it's normal. Like there is this beautiful story that is connected to the same um, topic. So the topic is that uh, the people cut the turkey. You know, whenever they get a turkey, they cut it to go in the oven. So even though the oven might be big, they still keep on cutting the turkey to, fit, to go in the oven. So one day one of them, the daughter asked the mother, Mother, why do you all cut the turkey? So she says, well, my mother used to cut the turkey, so I cut the turkey also. So then she called her grandmother, this is her mother's mother, and asked her, Grandma, why you all cut the turkey to go in the oven? So she said, well, my mother used to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, then she asked her mother why her mother used to do it. She said, well, that time the oven was small and they couldn't fit in the oven, so they used to cut it. <laughs> But now the ovens are big, but they still continue cutting it. So, why that point is that hmm, actions like these continue or so come down from generation to generation, and everyone thinks that because my parents did like that, it is right. Because their parents did that. So because it came down from generation to generation, everyone think that this is right because my parents did it. And their parents think that it is right because their parents did it. So there was no one to correct anyone from the very beginning. So anything that is handed down, that from generation to generation, that cause sorrow, cause pain, which is not right, we think it is right when it could be very, very wrong. But because it came from many, many years, who knows? So then it becomes cultural, it becomes traditional. And if in the beginning there was wars, for example, people would fight and kill each other, okay, then everyone think it is okay to fight. What is right and what is wrong? How to know what is right and what is wrong. So whatever is wrong will definitely cause pain and sorrow, hurt, suffering. And that which is right will establish peace, will establish happiness, establish harmony. So understanding the difference between right and wrong, of course, is the key to a successful world, community. Now you mentioned that the human mind is not designed to learn on the, when somebody is angry. Yes. I guess it's because they become defensive. So yeah. what about the parenting style of do as I say but not as I do? Which mm -hmm. is not necessarily, not necessarily that the parent is angry. Mm -hmm. But for example, a parent who is drinking alcohol or smoking and saying do not angrily but do saying I don't want to see you smoke when you get big, or I don't want to see you drink. But he's doing it. Yeah. yeah. What, what about that parenting style? Yeah. Why do you think that works? Do you think the children learn anything? If not, why, why not then? Mm -hmm. um, that could ha 
that could be understood in both ways, two ways, because remember there is this beautiful little analogy where the alcoholic father had two sons and one came out to be an alcoholic and the other was totally non-alcoholic. And when they were both asked, well, why did you choose this part? So the alcoholic son said, well, I looked at my father. And the non-alcoholic son also said, I looked at my father. So both watched their father. But each one learned differently. It ended up, or finally, it depends on the decision, the choice of each individual, of course. If you're telling, if you are smoking, for example, and you are telling your son, I don't want to, you to grow up to be a smoker, then you're not setting an example one. He may or may not, depends on his choice. If he is a strong individual, he have his willpower, strong mindset, he will not do what you're doing. He could think different. But if that child is weak, emotionally weak, mentally weak, spiritually weak, weak in many ways, he doesn't have his own self-esteem, self-respect, then he will do whatever he wants, which may not be the right thing. So in the end, yes, it depends on each individual and the decision they may make or take in their life. And if it does not have an objective in life, which means that they don't know what they want in their future, because you find people like that. They don't know what to make of their life, what to do. They don't have a proper, a proper career or profession. So they just do whatever comes up. And that may also mean that could lead them to either alcohol or smoking. It means that this individual is not really prepared to face life as it should be. It means he is weak, emotionally weak. He have a weak mindset, he doesn't have his own willpower, he needs help. Whereas the one who is strong, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, will have, will make firm decisions on, this is what I want to be. And not treading the wrong path, but taking the right decisions. And yes, you get those kinds of individual in many homes. Sometimes in one home, one person might come out to be a, Alcoholic, really, really bad. And one might come out to be like a saint. Very good. Very disciplined. Very um, peaceful and with good morals. So they all, it all depends on each one's decision. The power to decide. The power to discern. You know what is discern? Understanding right and wrong and taking the right decision. So it boils down to the individuals. For example... In my personal case, I came from a home, which is okay, fine. But I have decided, I, my aim was like, I wanted to be something, something else, not like everybody else. No, because for me, life was not just to work, earn, eat and sleep. And that was married. not my life and get married. <laughs> that was not my aim. My aim was that I become something that I want to, which means not only a leader, but I want you to be powerful. And not physically powerful, or materially powerful, but spiritually powerful. From even small, very small, you know. I never wanted to live, I never wanted to even go to school. I wanted to go in the forest and just sit down and do meditation. Seriously. From a very young age, but of course, I know that my parents do not allow me to do that. So children grow up and they're born with different kind of, let's call it, um, mental, emotional and spiritual desires. And parents also have to respect that. Mm -hmm. Of course, if the desire is a pure one, with pure aims and objectives, they should be, children should be allowed. If the children is weak mentally, emotionally, spiritually, Understand that these children need help, need to help them. The strong ones are strong anyway. He will, you know, uh, tread his path, whatever he wants, make his decision and do whatever he wants. That's my, my personal example because I was young and my parents respected all my decisions. 
because I'd never did wrong things. I would quicker gather the people from this village. I am from this very village. And I would gather all the youths and created programs for them. Like we did skits and dramas and we had group singing. We did so many things that this, our, my generation of youths did not go into smoking and drinking and alcohol, alcohol abuse and drug abuse and things like that. Thank God they were saved because we had a beautiful community, togetherness, family feeling. Because I was able to bring them together and create programs so they were all saved. That was, this is, a, uh, even now people talk about it, even now. So yes, in the end is an individual decision, fine, but when the children are weak, children need support. Children need your help and they need your guidance. Hmm? So in looking at that, the, the strong-willed child mm -hmm. knows what they want. Mm -hmm. And then the child who is weak, mm -hmm or needs guidance, mm -hmm. needs protection, will follow the guidelines of the, print, of the parent. Mm -hmm. So then in that sense, this is where the parent should be concerned with being a teacher, mm -hmm. rather than, let's say, indulging, and then trying to dictate or, or um, let's say, delegate. Mm -hmm in terms of what the child should do and what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So how does, let's look at, okay, we have looked at the strong child, the strong-minded child, mm -hmm. but what future awaits the child who is looking at that? Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of future, I'm talking about emotionally because we have established, okay, then that is the child who is seeking guidance. Mm -hmm. They are seeking some sort help. of help mm -hmm. and they need it. Mm -hmm. So to the parent who is not recognizing that and the parent that is not doing that, mm -hmm. what awaits a child like that in the future? Um, Relationships and, and lifestyle. Yes, so there could be many. Because one, if the parent doesn't even understand what this child is going through, they, do, they, don't, they will not even know how to help that child. And this is what is happening in many families. In today's world, Parents does not know, understand that they have a problem also. Much less to understand that this child has a problem and need help. Hmm? And so when the child is not able to cope, for example, is not able to study well, hmm? what parents does? They use violence. Hmm? Violent words, harsh words. They shout at the child which makes it even worse. So I think the whole, this whole situation should begin where the parents themselves are being educated on how to teach their child. Because if parents have no knowledge of how to teach their ch children, what would you expect of the children? And that's why we see children leaving the homes and going to look for love outside. They go to look for happiness outside, they were, they're happy with their friends outside, they're not happy in the homes. Because the parents themselves does not know how to treat the children in the home. So this is also another topic, a bigger topic. Where does it come from? So who really are creating criminal elements? Or um, individuals who cannot think right in a society, who are responsible? It comes from the home. When the home is correct, hmm? home is, when there is peace in the home, there will be peace in, the, in society, in the community. When there is peace in the home, the individuals in that home will be, live in harmony. So whatever is happening in our homes hmm, is what we are projecting out into the society. So where does it all, all begin? It all begins from the home, every home. And every home have that one person which is who is very good and that one person who is very bad. <laughs> from your Somehow experience, you know. from your experience, how many people in terms of society, let's say the amount of people that you have met, how many people have that natural self-discipline and guidance and strength mm -hmm. compared to the amount of people who need help? 
How many people do you see? The more more people need help than those who have that their personal inner strength. I would say like 80, 80 for 20, 80 over 20. Percent? Yes. 80% of the people needs help. Very little, 20% are people who have their own willpower, their own inner strength, which means the majority of people out there needs help. And of course, they are, you, you don't know that they need help unless they come to you. And this is another issue, if they don't come to you, then the world is suffering actually. And do you know that there is a lot of suffering in the world? A lot of suffering we don't even know about, but it exists. Unless you don't talk to people, you don't know what people are going through. So let's just take this next few minutes to think about our life, the lifestyle we live, how we can enhance our lifestyle to such a point where I have a beautiful, a discipline and a life based on principles, good values. I take a look at myself and as I look at myself, I recognize my weaknesses, I recognize my strengths. And as I recognize both, I realize that I need to get rid of these weaknesses and build on my strengths, build on my positive values. And to do that, I'm going to only concentrate on the good things in my life the values and my strengths. I understand that I have to let go of many other weaknesses, defects, faults, negativities and start adopting more clean, pure, and uh, principled thoughts, thoughts based on positive values, on positivity, thoughts that will help me to grow with strength, with inner values, with inner powers, Let me see myself being a role model, being a leader, a good leader in society, a leader that displays good qualities, a leader that has good values, Let me learn to be my real self, my true self, that peaceful, loving, kind individual. By Sampex Limited, networking societies for a better future.